Hi, I'm Lisa Crosby and welcome to this tutorial that is going to teach you how to use Power Virtual Agents. This is designed for complete beginners. If you haven't used this before, welcome along. What I'm going to do is show you how to create a bot, how to create topics within that bot so that you've got conversation happening. I'm going to show you to do some more clever things as well using entities and variables and topic redirects. You're going to publish your bot to a demo website, which you can share with your friends and show them what you've done. I really hope you'll do that. It's a super cool thing to do. Uh, we're also going to bring in a little bit of Power Automate so that you can see your bot take action because this is something else that we can do um, with this amazing platform. So I really hope this is useful. Uh, feel free to work through this at your own pace, pause, work alongside it on another screen and build that bot. Um, I really hope you enjoy this. So the first thing you need to do is visit this website here. It's a nice short link for you to remember that will take you to the Power Virtual Agents homepage. And then once you're there, you're either going to choose sign in if you've been here before or try free, which will kick off a 30 day free trial for you. You'll be able to do everything that I'm about to show you there in a free trial environment. Uh, I'm going to click sign in because I've uh, been here before. What that will normally do is prompt you to enter your Microsoft account credentials um, or you can go through the, the free trial process and I've, I've actually got another video here if you need help with uh, with going through that process of signing in and setting up a trial. So when that page is loaded up, you'll find yourself in the home page here. Uh, you'll have something probably called TestBot or Contoso Customer Service. Um, and what you want to do is create your own real bot here. So we're going to go into the little bot icon in the top panel there. Uh, and I'm going to choose new bot and we just give the bot a name. So I'm going to call this one Fitness Helper. Um, the scenario that we're building out here today is about uh, a gym where we're going to get the bot to help with people asking with inquiries and opening hours and things like that. So what you'll get here is some rather entertaining little graphics. I am just going to um, pause the video here and we'll see what happens. We give this a couple of minutes and we'll wait for it to come back. Now, sometimes you'll see this come up straight away. We'll just click um, and close that one. Um, you'll sometimes see it come up straight away. Sometimes you'll get this message here that says creating bot step two or four or whatever. And you need to give that uh, give that a few minutes to get. So this is a moment to uh, if you're following along here, go grab a cup of tea, coffee, beverage of your choice and uh, come back and we will see this in action. All right. And then after a few minutes, it does say it can take up to 15 minutes. You will see that that message has changed now to say bot created and we're now good to go. We'll just uh, close that message. So just to orient you around what we've got inside Power Virtual Agents, when we first start down the side here, we've got our home screen. Uh, we've also got topics here. So the topics are the, the main part of where we're going to be building out what we're what we're doing in Power Virtual Agent. Um, and down the side here, you'll see we've got some user topics that come with um, with Power Virtual Agent. So you've got some lessons in there that you can play around with. But what we get here is a, a bunch of system topics. So a lot of the scaffolding is already done for you. You've got a uh, greeting, you've got something to start over, goodbye, escalation, confirm success, all of those kinds of things built in. So really all you need to do is build out the content, the topics that are specific to your particular organization. You don't need to do all the sort of start and finish and satisfaction type stuff. That's all, that's all there for you. Uh, we have a section here called entities. Now, if you use uh, other kinds of databases, especially common data service, just be aware that this is a different use of the word entities than you might be useful used to. So this is entities in the sense of uh, working with, with text and extracting key pieces of information from text. So what this allows uh, the bot to do is to recognize things that it knows. So we've got things in there like age, city, color, and so on, so that it can look for those things in the text of what the user is typing and extract them. So someone types a sentence, for instance, like I have a shiny red car and it's looking for a color. It's able to extract the word red from there because it knows that. And so your Power Virtual Agents uh, bot comes with a, a, a stack of pre-built entities, things it already knows, and the ability also for you to add additional entities if you want to teach it about the language and terminology that you use uh, in your particular scenario. 
We also have analytics in here. Now this is going to be empty because I've literally just spun up this bot, but you've got a built-in dashboard here that's going to allow you to, to see uh, which topics are escalating, which topics are resolved, which topics have been abandoned. It's going to measure customer satisfaction and sentiment and so on. It's a very rich uh, dashboarding uh, built in there and also the ability to download all the chat history that you've got with your bot. Publish is where we are going to publish our bot. So once you've built it, you do actually have to press publish in order for it to go live. Uh, and we've also got the ability here, and I'll show you this when we're done, uh, to put your bot on a demo website, single click, and you can actually see the thing working on a, on a demo website and share it, uh, share it with other people if you want to show them what you've done. And then within the manage section here, we have a bunch of channels. So once you're ready to deploy your bot in a, in a real scenario here, here are all the different ways that you can do that. So custom website, obviously, so you've got the ability to put it on your website, which is a fairly typical use case for a bot, right? It's a business to consumer kind of situation, pop it on your website, all good. But you've actually got a heap of other options here too. So we've got, um, you know, if you if you work primarily in Facebook, you can have it in, uh, in Facebook there. Um, lots of other things here. You can also embed it in Teams. So if you've got an internal use case, you can actually use this tech to create a chatbot for internal use and have it sitting inside Teams. Um, I'm recording recording this uh, early June 2020 on the announced roadmap. Uh, Power Apps is also coming as a channel, so maybe depending on when you're watching this, you might see that as an option there. Uh, but this is what it looks like as of the date of recording. All right, so let's get started and build our first topic here. So what we're going to do is click on the new topic button and we're going to give our topic a name. So my topic here is going to be about um, helping the user find the opening hours. So we're I'm working with a fictional um, fitness center here and we're going to put in opening hours uh, as a topic. Now with the trigger phrase, you need to enter, it says there five to 10 diverse phrases. So what we're looking for here is, is not full sentences. The user doesn't have to put in exactly word for word what's going on here. This is where the AI coming through in the platform is really going to help you out. So we're just going to give it enough different keywords and phrases and things here that the, the bot will understand this is the topic to trigger. So we might say, you know, when are you open? Opening times, opening, oops. And so on. So we just put in a handful of, of trigger phrases there. I won't worry too much about fleshing that out completely, but you get the idea sort of different, slightly different phrases and wordings. And then I'm going to click here to go to the authoring canvas. You'll see that automatically saves my topic and takes me to the place where I can start to build out my, um, my topic here. So we're going to say, I can help you with opening hours. And then what we're going to do is ask a question. So we can put in a question here and I'm just going to start with a multiple choice question, which is the first option that comes up and say, which part of the fitness center do you want to use? And we're going to pop in a couple of options here. We're going to put in, we might want the pool and or the gym. Now, when you hit that, when you do that second multiple choice thing, don't hit enter because it will automatically trigger to create a new option, which is a bit of a pain. So I'm just going to click away there. So we've just got those two options and you'll see a couple of things have happened here. We've got automatically created a variable. So a variable is going to store the information that comes in from the user response. And then we can use that later uh, inside the bot if we want to, uh, including passing it across into Power Automate to trigger a flow, to send it out to another system if we want to. And and you'll see the other thing that's happened is it's created these two conditional branches. So we've got um, if it's equal to pool, equal to gym, the user interface did that automatically for me when I, when I chose multiple choice questions. I didn't actually have to construct that part. So the first thing we're going to do is give this variable a bit of a better name than just var, because otherwise you'll end up with var1, var2, yeah, that's messy. So I'm going to click on the pencil icon to edit that here. And I'm going to call this variable um, fitness type. Now, this is uh, brand new at the time of recording is the ability to choose whether I want that variable to be used just in this topic or across the whole bot. So I'll be able to pick it up in other topics. Uh, for now, I'm just going to uh, leave it here and we'll click save close that and you'll see that automatically also fleshed out 
changing the name in the steps uh, in the next level down. All right, now the next thing I'm going to do is show a message. So you'll see a number of different options here. We're going to go through these a bit later in the tutorial. But the first thing I'm going to do here is just choose the show a message option, which is just giving a response. Uh, and what we're going to do is say the opening hours for now, what I can do is bring in this value here for the pool if I wanted to. So this little option here is for bringing in that variable and I can bring in fitness type there. So it will say now the opening hours for the whatever was entered there pool. All right, and then we can just pop something in here. Uh, I'm just going to copy paste um, from my other screen here. So you can bring some formatting and things here. Uh, at the time of recording, you can't bring images in yet, but that is also part of the, the roadmap. So we've popped those ones in there. And we're going to do the same on the other side here and show a message. We'll say the opening hours for the, and we'll bring in that one again. Uh, and I'll just grab copy paste from there too. All right. And we will just save that. So that's all I want to do there. Nice basic topic. Um, the other thing you can do here is to end the conversation. So I said at the start, we've got a whole lot of things standardly built in, all that scaffolding built in to do things. So what we can do here is just say end the conversation and end with a survey. You'll notice there there's a transfer to agent option. I'm not going to cover that in this uh, in this first round tutorial, uh, but you can also build in escalating to an agent uh, within, within the functionality here. Whoops, wrong one. Let's try that again. <laughs> so we're going to go end the conversation, end with survey, that's good. Um, and same over here, we can also um, end with survey, or we can just uh, take that node. Now this is really cool, watch this. You can drag that across there and put it there, and then they come together. Beautiful. So end and save. Now what we can do is test our bot over the side here. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, switch on this track between topics option. And what that allows us to do is as we're testing the bot, you'll see over in the canvas on the side here, we'll get some green ticks along the way and it's actually going to track where the bot is up to and which part of it's doing. So you can see all those pieces working. So if I start off with something like hello, there's actually that built in greeting topic. So you'll notice I haven't built that, but that's already built in there. And we're going to see it switch in the canvas on the right hand side here to the greeting topic and tick and go through. Hi, I'm a virtual agent and so on. You can go in and edit that greeting topic, pop your own um, your own sort of voice and your own language in there. It's actually um, really good practice to make sure you are telling the user that they're talking to a bot. The research shows that people are much more satisfied working with a bot if they know that they're chatting to a bot. If they think they're chatting to a human and they're getting a bot experience, then the satisfaction goes way down. So it is good, uh, especially if you're working with a, a new bot uh, and developing a new bot to, to declare that the person is talking to a bot. So we say, well, can I help you with today? I'm going to say, when are you open? And you'll see on the right hand side there, that's going to switch across to our other um, trigger, for, uh, the other trigger phrase that's picked up on the opening hours topic, because I've put that in. And you'll see down the side here what it's, it's following along. I can help you with opening hours. Which part do you want? Uh, and I'm going to click on pull there. And you can see on the right, it went down that path. It was quite quick. It's actually now jumped away into the customer satisfaction score uh, topic. Did that answer your question? Sure. Yep. And that's going to then go into the survey, which allows me to say, yep, that was a good experience. And can I help with anything else? No, thanks. So there you go. You've created your first topic. We've done trigger phrases. Uh, we've put a multiple choice question in there and referred it to the end of conversation topic. All right. So now let's step it up a notch and start to work with the entities and variables uh, in a different way. So we're just going to close that. Actually, if you do close that, just so you know, if you ever lose that at any point down the side here, test your bot is the way that you can get it back. What I actually meant to do there was say reset. So now we're going to go back into topics. I'm going to create another new topic. And this one is going to ask the user for some more information, sort of in a back and forth question style. So we're going to call this one swimming lessons. So now we're setting up a topic for someone who's coming uh, to the fitness center and wants to know about swimming lessons. So um, we might put in adult swimming lessons, um, swim school learn to swim and so on. So just again, different phrases there. I'm going to go through to the authoring canvas and flesh this one out. Now, what we're going to do here is, is look at this concept of entity. So I'm going to start um, with, um, you know, let's help you learn to swim and get some details. 
and I'm going to add in here, ask, a, oops, not call an action, ask a question. So the first thing I'm going to ask is, what's your name? And now where before we put in a question that was a multiple choice question, in this case, I'm going to look for a particular kind of information um, that's coming through. So I'm actually going to look for a person's name here because we're asking for the person's name. And you'll see there in the interface, it gets rid of the, the conditional branching that comes with a multiple choice question. And again, we'll just rename this variable into the person's name so that we know what that is and save it. The next thing I'm going to ask for is um, is the age. So we know perhaps if it's um, an adult or a child um, that's asking for the swimming lesson. So we'll ask another question here and say, how old are you? Now, this is a completely contrived example, right? Because honestly, a bot going, how old are you? Is, <laughs> is perhaps a little bit confronting, but I'm doing this to show you how that uh, how the entities work and how this one works. So go with me on, on that. So what we're going to do here is identify an age. So this actually, I clicked too fast there, but you'll see there, this will actually be able to extract the number from the person's age. So the concept of the entities here is that if I say I am... 40 years old and type F-O-R-T-Y as a word in a full sentence, it's actually able to read that and extract that age from that sentence. If I just type the number, you know, 21, it will pick that up too. So I'll show you that when we when we work through, uh, work through the demo of what we're building here. So I'm going to pop in age there and save that. Um, and then we might also say, let's ask another question here. Let's get the person's email. And um, we are going to identify here email as a pre-built entity. So again, this is able to recognize the format of an email address in any string of text. So if the user types my email is and then types their email address, it's able to pick that up. They don't have to just type the email address. If they put other junk around it, it will still recognize it. Also means it's looking for valid email address formats. So if someone types something that's not a valid email address format, it's able to it's able to recognize that. So we'll just edit that variable there and call that one email. And then I'm going to give it uh, another multiple choice here. Um, and actually, we'll just we'll just let the person put in um, a free text option. So we're going to say, let's ask a question and say, what what days work for you? Uh, and in this case, I'm just going to take the user's whole response. So this is just free text. I'm not looking for anything in particular in the um, in the thing. It's not a particular entity. It's just whatever the user types in. Um, so we'll just call that one days and save that. All right. Now, just to show you how the variables work here, we're going to put a little confirmation message in the end. So we're going to add something there. We're going to show a message and we're going to bring those variables back in so we can see what's going on. So we're going to say thank you and bring in the person's name. You are interested in swimming lessons for someone who is, I'm going to bring in the age on the following days and we will bring in the days uh, and we'll say we will contact you and bring in that email address there. All right, so let's give this a test run and I want to show you what's going on with the variables. Now, the other thing to do here is to pop out from this little black sidebar here, pop that out and you'll get the variable search there. So what we can do now is go through and watch what happens when we test the bot. So here we go, we'll go up to the, the top here and I'm just going to give it a trigger phrase. Um, I'm interested in swimming lessons. Now, it's going to trigger this topic. There we go. Great. What's your name? My name's Lisa. Now watch what happens here when I put that in. There we go. Name equals Lisa. So it's found that and it's put it into the variable. How old are you? So I'll show you what I was talking about before. If I say I am 40 years old. So I've given it a full sentence in words here instead of a number and it is able to pick that out because it recognizes it. And you'll see here in the age. There we go. It's turned that into a number and it's recognized it. What's your email address? We'll just put in my email. There we go. It's got that in there. And what days work for you? And say Monday and Wednesday. 
and that will just take that. And there you go. We can see it's giving us a confirmation back. Thank you, Lisa. You're interested in swimming lessons for someone who is 40 on the following days. There we go. Lovely. Now, it's a kind of a stilted conversation interaction. Let me just show you what else this entity part can do. So if I reset that bot and we'll go back to the start again and I'll just um, pop in the trigger phrase again. Swimming lessons. All right. What's your name? We'll give it the name again. Now, let's say I'm not paying attention here. I'm expecting it's going to give me the email next. I'm going to actually go, I'm going to pull my email address in. What it's going to do is recognize two things. Firstly, that I've given it a piece of information it's looking for. So look at that. It's actually populated my email address in that variable because it, it knows it was looking for that, even though it wasn't looking for it in that question. It's also said, I didn't understand how old are you because I haven't asked the question. So let me just sort of put in a number here and I'll, I'll show you that sort of basic way it works. Now, did you see that it skipped the email question because it knows that it's already got that piece of information. So it doesn't need to ask me that again. What days for you work for you? I'll just say Saturday and there you go. So that's how the variables and the entities are working. So it's able to look for that kind of information in the text that the user's providing and to do it in a way that is um, more natural conversation. So this is a fairly contrived example to work through the tutorial here, but you can see how it's not literally going back and re-asking for something that it already knows. Uh, and it's able to pick up on things, even if you're giving the answers in a full sentence, worded slightly differently, whatever, it's able to pick up those things. So that's that entity extraction feature which is really giving you the ability to create something that has a much more natural conversational style. All right, so last thing we're going to do here um, is go into the publish section. We're going to click publish and publish our bot, getting it ready to put out. There we go. That only takes a second. And then I'm going to do a click here through to demo website. Now that's going to pop up this pre-prepared demo website. You can see I've got the name of the bot. Incidentally, you can also change the color and the icons and things on your bot if, uh, if you want to have something that matches your branding. So I'm going to go, hello. And now we can see it happening. Now you can actually just grab the URL from your bot here um, and copy and paste that and send it to someone. So if you've had a go at building this and you want to share it with someone and say, hey, check it out, I built a bot, then you can just grab that URL and send it and say, you know, they can do that. So obviously this is not something you'd use in a real environment here. This is a this is a demo website. But if you're working on something, you want your colleagues to test it before you've got it published live on your real website or your real social channel or whatever, then you can just grab that URL and share it with your colleagues, share it with your friends, show them what you've done. Why not? Right. So what can I help you with today? Um, we can say when are you open? Uh, there we go. I want to go with um, the gym. Did that answer your question? Yes. Good. Uh, can I help with anything else? Yes. Now let's say, um, do you have swimming lessons? And that will trigger that other one. What's my name? I am, let's say I'm 25. Um, and we are all good. All right, so that's the basics of the bot. Next thing I'm going to show you is how we can use Power Automate to get it to take that information and send it through to someone to do a follow up. So we're going to go back into our Power Virtual Agents canvas here and back into the topic that we were working on, which is this swimming lessons topic. Now we're going to bring in another part of the Power Platform here called Power Automate, which allows you to have workflow automation across different systems and services. So you can actually use this to uh, reach out into your other business systems to post information, retrieve information. You can authenticate users and have them, um, you know, logged in when when the actions are happening. So I'm going to take you through a nice simple example here of using Power Automate to, to post a message in Teams. So in our fictional scenario here, the person has interacted with the chat bot. They've put in their information that they're in, interested in swimming lessons and the age and the days and everything. And what we're going to do is push that through to the internal team managing that in order for that person to, to get back to the customer. So nice, simple use case here. Um, you can, of course, use this technology to escalate to a, a real live agent if you have live agent chat uh, in in there uh, but you can also you can also use it to to do something quite simple like this 
So I'm going to click through to the authoring canvas again. And what we're going to do is scroll back down to where we were and we've got this nice confirmation message. Uh, and I'm going to come in here and insert what's called call and action. So this is where we're going to bring in uh, Power Automate. Now, if I already had some uh, flows built, I would see them here, but this is the first time I'm doing this. So I'm going to click create a flow and that will launch a new window, which will open uh, Power Automate and allow me to get going with that. So here we are in Power Automate and you'll see that it's already set up with the start and the end, the inputs and the outputs. And all you need to do then is go in and, and put the stuff in the middle here. So what we're doing as a, as a concept is bringing in inputs from the bot. So things we've picked up from the bot. So you remember in this conversation, we've asked a person for their name, their email, their age and so on. And then what we're going to do is connect that up to Microsoft Teams and post a notification there. So we're going to start with the input and we're going to bring in all those inputs that we had from the bot. So we asked the person for their name, which was a text. We also asked them for their email address, which was a text. We asked them for their age and their age is actually a number. So we're going to give that uh, that uh, variable there. So we're going to call that one age of a, a number type variable. And we also asked for the days uh, that they were interested in the swimming lessons. So then what I'm going to do is add the Microsoft Teams connector. Uh, this is a nice easy one to work with. You can be using any any connector. There's about 300 different connectors in the platform to all sorts of business systems and Microsoft stuff, but also, you know, full enterprise database systems, whatever you're using, you're able to connect this up and have your bot interact with those things. So what I'm going to do here is just choose that, um, that Teams connector and I'm going to choose the post a message action in there. First thing I'm going to do is choose which team I want it to go into. So remember, this is going through to the fictional team who manage the, the service here. So we're going to put it in the fitness center team. And then we've got a channel set up in that team, which is for inquiries. And then I'm going to post the message. So this is where we put the body of the message. Now, when I click in the body there, you'll see I've got a text editor, but I'm also getting some dynamic content that's coming up there, which is picking up from the previous step in that flow. So I'm going to say you have a new inquiry. And then we're going to fill in the details of what's come through. So I'm just going to keep this nice and simple. We're just going to say name and I can click on the name. Uh, we are going to say email. Now, obviously, you could use this to trigger automatic email communications out if that's what you wanted to do with uh, with the um, Outlook send an email connector, all sorts of options here. Uh, we're going to say the days that they're interested in. And then we're also going to pull in the age. Now, if you don't see the thing that you want here, you can actually just search for it. It doesn't always show you everything. So as I search for it, you can see that that's there as well. So now we've got all that information sitting in there. You can also return values to Power Virtual Agents if the uh, if the flow here was going away and doing something, retrieving information, sending it back. Not even going to worry about that. Uh, we're just going to to keep it as simple as just posting a message. So the next thing I want to do is just give this a more sensible name than just Power Virtual Agents Flow Template. So we're going to call this one Post Message in Teams. And then we save it and we just give that a second. It'll confirm that it's saved. And now this is opened in a new tab. So what we need to do then is go back to the tab for our Power Virtual Agent and pop that flow in. Now I'm actually going to pop it up here. I can insert it here before the confirmation message. Uh, I'm going to go in there and say, let's call an action. And now this time you'll see the one that we've just built. There it is there, post a message in Teams. I'm going to pick that up. And you'll see now it's asking me to fill in the variables because what I've done is I've got all these variables in Power virtual agents. I've gone away and built a flow in Power Automate and, and told it to expect certain bits of information. So now we just need to match those things together. So we're saying the variable in Power Automate called name is going to come from the bot variable here called name. Email is going to come from email. Age is a number. So you'll notice when I drop down here, I only get the options for the number variable. And days is going to come from there. So now we've got all of that matched up. Let's save it and let's give it a test run. All right, so we're going to go over here and uh, we'll just give it a second to refresh. So we're going to say swimming lessons. There we go. What's your name? Uh, let's say my name is Jody. How old are you? I'm 30. My email is jody at test.com and I'm interested in Saturdays. 
All right, and then I'm going to get the confirmation message back from uh, from the bot there. So you can see it's gone through the flow stage. It's given me the confirmation message. And now I'm going to go across into Teams. I'm just using Teams on the web here. And there we go. There it comes through. So I'm in, remember, I had the Fitness Center channel. I had, sorry, Fitness Center team and the Inquiries channel. There's one that I uh, that I did earlier. And we have a new inquiry, Jody at test.com, which is all the things that I just entered there. And that's sitting as a notification inside Teams for uh, for that team to follow up with. They could go in there and reply and do whatever they need to do. But there you go. Your bot has received all that information from the customer, posted something through to the internal team to make a follow up. All right, so there's one last thing that I'd like to show you here, which is called a topic redirect. So let's bring these things together. If I go back to my original topic, you'll remember we were looking at opening hours. Uh, so let's go into that authoring canvas here. And what I'm going to do is pop something in here that if the person comes through, so remember we had what part of the fitness center do you want? And one of the options was the pool. I'm actually going to bring another option in here that asks them if they want swimming lessons. So let's just um, grab this grab this node and separate it out. So we've disconnected those two things. And then what we're going to do here is ask the user another question. So we're going to pop a question in here that says, are you interested in swimming lessons? And this is a yes, no question. So this is a Boolean. And we will save this as I'll just call it swim, that'll do for now. All right, so then what we need to do is branch out. Yes, they're interested in swimming lessons or not. So we're going to add a condition here. So we're going to say now if that variable is equal to true. So the person says, yes, I'm interested in swimming lessons. What we're going to do here is go to another topic. And we can go through here now and pick out that swimming lessons topic. And that's going to take them through to the one we just did. So we don't have to build all these things out in an exact hierarchy. These are separate topics that can be triggered separately. But I can also thread them back in together so that the bot can redirect to relevant topics along the way. And in all other conditions, we're just going to end the conversation um, we'll just close that. We're going to end the conversation there with a the survey. We'll save that. All right, final test. <laughs> Let's bring this whole thing together. I am going to publish it. I'm going to go back through to the demo website and let's run it there and see it in action. So I'm a customer. I'm coming along to this gym and I'm saying hello. You can also set it up so the bot starts the conversation too. I haven't done that here, but that's another possibility. There we go. What can you help me with? Um, when are you open? And I'm interested in the pool. Are you interested in swimming lessons? Yes. Yes, I am. There we go. I'll get some details from you. What's your name? This time we might say, Bob, how old are you? Uh, Bob is 60 and Bob at test. Um, uh, what day is Bob wants to swim on a Wednesday? All right, all done. And then we can just go back in now and see our inquiries. And there we go. You have a new inquiry from Bob and that's come through. So there you have it, Power Virtual Agents. You built your first bot. I really hope that that's something that's been as fun for you <laughs> as it is for me. Um, if you've built a bot on the demo website there and, and had a go at it, grab that URL, share it with someone, say, hey, check it out, look what I built, um, and have some fun with that. Let me know, you know what else you're building with it. Plenty to do here, uh, and you can go much deeper with this technology as well, but the idea here is to give you that starting point. Those are the fundamental things you need to know to start building bots, so have fun with that. Thanks for watching.